Tracing the history of the contemporary queer community can take you on a number of different paths. From the Stonewall Riots, to the queer history of San Francisco, and the life of Harvey Milk. From gay politics in the 1970s, to the 1980s AIDS crisis, to the legalization of gay marriage. But many lines of contemporary Western queer history trace inevitably back to Germany. Many of the firsts of modern queer history took place in Germany, from the first homosexual movement and the first gay rights organization to the origins of early trans terminology, from many of the first queer publications and periodicals to the first ever performed gender reassignment surgeries. In short, Germany was monumental in shaping modern Western queer history, and traces of this history still ripple out into the queer identities, terminology, and culture of today. This video series will cover the contemporary queer history of Germany, starting with the origins of the first homosexual movement, moving through the lively queer culture of the Weimar era, queer publications and political movements, to the suppression and attempted erasure of this history by the Nazi regime and ending with the slow recovery of this movement and culture following the Second World War. The topics for this video series are Introduction and Origins of the First Homosexual Movement Magnus Hirschfeld Feminism and the First Homosexual Movement A Lesbian History of Weimar Germany A Trans History of Weimar Germany Prejudices in Paragraph 175 Queer Urban Scenes in Weimar, Germany, Queer Networks and Friendship Clubs, Queer Publishing in Weimar, Germany, Queer Literature and Art, Debates about Queer Terminology, Rising Conservatism, Nazi Persecution, and the Pink Triangle, and Queer Life in Germany after 1945. These video topics are not fixed and are all subject to change. Further topics may be added over the course of this series if they are requested, and I may decide to do deeper dives on certain topics as I go along. And as such, your feedback is highly valued and appreciated, and will shape the course of these videos. At the end of this series, I plan to rework the scripts of all of the videos into one complete narrative of the queer history of Germany. Once I have gained the experience and done the necessary research to take on such a project. So without further ado, the origins of the first homosexual movement lie in the early sexological movement of the mid-1800s. Sexology was an intellectual movement which attempted to examine sexuality and gender identity as scientific phenomena. During the mid-1800s, there was an ever-increasing amount of academic and scientific debate over the nature of homosexuality. Early writings theorized that homosexuality was a degeneracy, a perversion, or a mental illness. However, it was around this time that many writers, academics, and scientists began to come to the conclusion that homosexuality was natural and biological. Some of these writers, activists, and scientists included Karl Heinrich Ulrichs, who introduced the term Uranian or Erning to describe men who loved other men, and the term Erninden to describe women who loved other women. Others include Johann Ludwig Casper, Claude Francois Lallemand, and Richard von Kraft Ebbing many of whom linked homosexuality to effeminate characteristics or natures. These early theories and their linkage of homosexuality to intersexuality and effeminacy were largely responsible for the development and reinforcement of homosexual men as effeminate, a topic we'll discuss in a bit more detail later. It was in this landscape that Magnus Hirschfeld surfaced and began to develop his own theories and studies on sexuality and gender. 
Magnus Hirschfeld, as you'll come to see in the next video, was instrumental in the homosexual movement of the era. He organized the Scientific Humanitarian Committee, or WHK, in 1897, the first ever gay rights organization. The goal of this committee was to use the latest scientific research to repeal the country's sodomy law, paragraph 175, and to promote wider tolerance for homosexuals. A magazine founded in the same decade by the anarchist and independent publisher Adolf Brand advocated for a revival of Greek love. Brand, a figure in the masculinist movement of the time, and his magazine The Special One, were the focal point of a group of men who championed a return to the manly culture of the classical era, known as the Community of the Special. This community also advocated for love between older and younger men, a proponent which would of course come under heavy criticism from many queer rights activists over the coming decade, who worked to divorce the associations of this community and the masculinist movement as a whole from the larger, more influential work of the homosexual emancipation movement. The homosexual emancipation movement and the scientific discussion that preceded and came throughout it allowed homosexual identities and relationships to surface in more mainstream conversations and contributed to the construction of queer spaces, identities, and even persisting stereotypes. The Scientific Humanitarian Committee, alongside other groups and individuals, came together to form a vibrant and dynamic movement. This movement was strengthened by the life and work of Magnus Hirschfeld, a German-Jewish physician who we'll cover in the next video. Thank you for watching this introduction to the queer history of Germany. I hope you enjoyed and will continue to follow along the course of this series.